All right, so what we got going on here today um, is a buddy Danny here. He's got, we just put a lift on this truck a couple months ago. Uh, Don Oak coilovers on the front. And if what you can see, as soon as we did that, and we pretty much knew this was going to happen, anytime you lift these trucks, old CV boots, they just, they can't handle it. They're okay at a stock height, but once you lift them and it puts the angles on those old boots, it just tears them up. So what we're going to do today is we're going to remove the, the CV shafts from both sides. He's got... Uh, OEM Toyota rebuild kits for both sides. We're gonna go ahead and reboot these shafts. The shafts are good We didn't throw a ton of grease out, so they're still tight. So we're gonna pull them out Rebuild the boot uh, rebuild the shafts with new CV boots. Uh, go ahead and put new lower ball joints on these two and uh, Slide everything back together and he should be good to go So what we're gonna do is pull the CV shaft out. These are super easy on these trucks. Uh, third gen 4Runners, first gen Tacomas to get these out. Um, I've changed them out on the trail in like 30 minutes before. So uh, I've already busted this loose. And what I do, there's, I got an old screwdriver here and I just kind of work myself around. Kind of until it starts separating from the, uh, the hub here to get this cap off and then I just take a breaker bar and I can snap this wrist way off. There we go. Once we get in here, what we've got is a cotter pin. Perfect, thanks. Get the right tool for the job here. Yeah, squeeze that guy together. Kind of work it out. I'll use this. Kind of pull it. All right. Now I like to just throw the parts in the top of the cap there just to keep them safe. Okay, once we get down to here, all we got to do is pull this hub off here. And I've got my handy dandy Roby Impact, and it takes a 35 millimeter socket. Let's see if it'll break it loose. Yep, there we go. If you're doing any work, great little tool. These Roby tools, they hold up super well. We've got the, the hub nut off here, get this guy out of the way. So, what I like to do before I pull the ball joint bolts out and swing the knuckle out of the way, just take a rubber mallet. And uh, kind of tap this thing, bust it loose, and, and uh, start working it back in the spline. So it doesn't take much. This looks like it's already pretty loose. There we go. Cool. So that's all we need there. All right. So what we're going to do now is take, take a 14 millimeter and uh, we're going to bust the lower ball joint bolts loose. And now what, what that'll do, and I'll show you, is allow us to swing the knuckle out of the way so we can get the, the CV shaft out of the, the front diff there. So four bolts here all right got a different ratchet socket here something a little bigger there we go that's better well that one legged woman she left this for another man well that one legged woman Make sure I had to kind of knock it up on there to get it set in there real good. So what I like to do is go ahead and bust them all loose uh, with a uh, with a ratchet, and then I've got a little impact here, and uh, I get a six-point socket, and I'll just go ahead and run them out with that. Yeah, I got me a fine collection. Um, we got new bolts to go ahead and put back in. You can see these here. They're real rusted and they're rounded off. Somebody's been in there before and really jacked on them. So, um, when we do ball joints, we always like to go ahead and put new bolts in it. The bolts from Toyota for this, I believe they're like a dollar twenty a piece or something. 
it's cheap insurance. Just take these, put them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in the back of your truck for trail spares if you ever need them. Um, but just get you new bolts when you do it. All right, so now we've got the four bolts out of the lower ball joint to the knuckle. Uh, we're going to swing it out. So we, this is loose here. So what we'll do here, you see we busted that loose before. So it's just coming right out. So let's shove it out. What we'll do is swing this to the side. Pull our CD shaft out as we go. Kind of being careful. We don't want to yank on this brake line too hard. Got a little bit of play in it. Once we get it out, we can kind of swing that down. And just leave this to the side here. And that'll hang right there. And now all we got to do is pop this guy out of the knuckle. So let's put that there. And then what we do here, there's some ridges on the CV up here. And we'll just take our pry bar. And usually what we can do is just reach in there, find something to pry against, and pop them out. So, let's see what we got here. So I'll just usually give it a little tug, see if it comes out, turn it, turn it. I think we got it. Yep. So busted that little C clip out of the diff there. So we'll just reach in here, grab this, pull it out. She should slide right out. Uh yeah. You can drop it out the bottom, not the back though. go. CV shaft is out. So now the fun part, we get to rebuild it. Yeah, get a close up on that. That's a typical tear point. Um, back up and inside these ridges are typical good tear points. The insides look good, but since we have them apart, we're going to redo it all. Yeah, cool. All right, so here we got CV shafts out of the truck. And what we're going to do is rebuild them. So just a word of advice, get yourself a roll of paper towels, a crap load of rags, whatever you need, because you're going to make a mess. Like, it's just all there is to it. There's no way around it. So um, we'll go ahead and pull this outer boot off, because I'm going to start on this side. So pull this clamp off, which they just, what they did on that, whoever did it, just laid that right over top of the old clamp. So these are pretty easy on this side. Um, these just fold over on the forerunners. The Tacomas, the bands are a little bit different. Um, they're actually a little harder to put on. Um, if I ever get one, I'll show you how that works. So what we'll do here is just start picking these up. These little tabs fold over. So you can get underneath, hold that guy up. You see that? Stretch it out and slide it off. Keep you, I like to just keep the trash can close by. Just start going to throw rags and junk right in it because you're going to have stuff everywhere. Okay, so what we'll do now, since the bottom is already broken here, let's go ahead, we'll go ahead and knock that clamp off too. Just scrape the grime off. I'm using just a pick here to kind of start the fold. And then just use a flat screwdriver to kick it back. There we go, fold that back out of the way. So that clamp's ready. When we're ready to take it off, we can slide that off the shaft. Okay, at this point, what I'm gonna do is throw this guy in my vise right here. This is a lot quicker without comedian help. All right, let's see if you can see that. Okay. So once we get it in the thing, this to me, this is just the easier way to work. So once we've got it like that, we'll start taking these boots off. And this is where everything gets messy. And these are super grimy. Yeah, you see I pulled these, uh, I pulled the tulip off earlier. So let me slide it back down so it doesn't fall off till I mark it. Okay. So at this point, what I like to do is either take a box knife or an old pair of scissors or something and cut what's left of the boot off and get it out of the way so that before I take this all apart, I want to kind of mark all the pieces so that when I put it back together, everything's still in line. So let me see if I can cut this real quick with these scissors I got. 
like I said, a box knife is easier, a razor blade, whatever's easiest for you. Okay, got that off. We'll take that and throw it straight in the garbage. Okay. Now I got a whole lot of paper towels here. So we'll just kind of start. I'm gonna just kind of I'm trying to wipe some of this off as I go. That way I'm trying to keep the grease as contained as possible. So I got that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark everything. I'll mark everything down this line right here. So I'll just go ahead and mark this right here. That just kind of indicates that this will mark up with the, the tulip and everything, the shaft as it comes on down. Okay, so what we'll do is take this guy off. Just slide it up. And I'll just sit it off to the side here for a minute. Until I get ready to clean it up, put it back together. So I'll start wiping this mess down. As you can see, these are pretty much throwing all the grease out of them. So they probably didn't have much time left like this. All right. Okay, so what we got, we got it kind of wiped down. I just got it generally wiped down. Oh, I got to mark it. See, I almost forgot. Kids got me all sidetracked. So like I said, I'm going to mark it down this line right here. So all I'm going to do is just take a Sharpie and uh, mark this here so I know which spline I'm on. Mark it here. And then I'm going to mark it right here too. And I'm going to mark the shaft. Like I said, just in case these wipe off or something, I can get as many as I want. So, now, just a word. If you're going to use any solvents, I'm just wiping all this stuff down. The grease that's in here isn't too bad, so I'm just going to wipe it all down best I can. If you're going to use any brake clean or solvents or anything, you're probably going to want to take a punch and mark all this stuff. Because uh, as soon as you put anything on here, you're going to mark your Sharpie marks right off. And then, then you're just kind of a guessing game on where everything went, so... What we got up here is a C-clip, uh, and you're going to need a pair of these C-clamp pliers here. They just uh, they're just basically look like two screwdriver blades on top. These are Craftsman. I bought them just for doing this stuff. And actually here, there's a number on it. If you can see it, 47386. That's probably the uh, tool number. So <clears throat> The boot kit from Toyota has all new C-clips, clamps, and everything in it. So all of this stuff, I'm going to set it to the side hang on to it until I'm done. But um, we're going to put all new stuff back in it. So throw that to the side. This guy here just pulls up. And I'm just going to hold them together. i got everything marked. So I'm going to take this and sit over here with the top tool until I finish cleaning it all up. All right. So I'm polishing the shaft here. Insert Aaron's joke. Danny that time. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the rest of this uh, boot that's broken. This other clamp. We'll chuck all this in the garbage. Uh, all right, get that off. You can cut them off too. Okay, so now I got this side disassembled. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the shaft over. And go ahead, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll disassemble the other side. Actually, I gotta pull the clamps off here, and then we'll disassemble the other side and go put put it back together. So on these these clamps are a little different. What I like to do is take a pair of dice and kind of. You can kind of twist them up a little bit. Come off pretty easy. We're not worried about saving those junk. So if they don't break on you like that one did, you can kind of pry them up a little bit. Just get a screwdriver on them. You just gotta get you know get them loosened up enough to get them off. There you go. So and then what we'll do here is um, it's pretty easy to slide off. What I like to do is just cut the bottom half of the boot. And, uh, you know, safety first. Try not to cut yourself. There we go. Like I said, I just want to get the first few layers off. Just so, so it slides up to this easier. Get that off that lip. Pull this off. And I'm just going to drop it right in the trash. This stuff is pretty good. See what I mean? Everywhere. Don't matter how hard you try. So we're just going to take some rags and start wiping this mess out. Okay. Now what I'm going to do put it back in the vise here. 
and you don't want to clamp this down. You don't want to mess up the splines in there. So I put a rag in there and just give it a little snug, just enough to hold it. Like I said, I'm not dipping these. I'm not spraying them out with any solvents or anything. This grease is in good shape, even though it's pretty old. I'm just going to wipe as much of it as I can out. And I've done a bunch of these like this and never had any problems. So again, you know, you're going to do all this the way you want to do it, but. I have read and seen people that have actually separated the shaft from this inner joint and um, I'm sorry the outer joint uh, I've never done it I've never needed the boots on the every one of them I've ever built has been in good shape all right that's probably good enough wipe the edge out here I get as much of stuff out of the groove as we can all right Alright, that should be do it. Alright, so we've got a new boot kit. Um, like I said, this rebuild, uh, they're, they're pretty similar between a 3rd gen 4Runner and the 1st gen Tacoma. But the shafts from the factory are different. There's a couple little things different and the boot kits are different. So you're going to want to get the one for the 4Runner or the Tacoma no matter which one, you know, whichever one you're working on. So here's all our new clips. So we've got four boot clamps. Uh, we've got the inner snap ring and then the snap ring that slides into the diff. We've got two types of grease and it matters where they go. So you've got this yellow grease here and you've got this black grease in the white tube here. And of course we've got two new boots. So let's get those out of the way. We're going to put this one to the side because that's our outer joint. It's pretty easy to tell which one's which because you've got the, the three tulips there. And then this is our uh, inner boot. So, what we're going to want to do, let's go ahead and get our bands open. This, yeah, for real, this is the outer CV boot. It's the one that's kind of almost a hard plastic. There's only two clamps that fit it. You can actually, if you try to put, you can see they're just way too big. So, um, the ones you want for the outer joint are these guys. They're, are, they're a full circle with just this little crimp thing in the end, and there's two of them. So. What we'll go ahead and do is we're going to fish these down and just kind of hang them out until we get the boot on. Um, this one, I'm going to go ahead and put on the top of the boot. And then when we slide it in, we'll clamp them down. So it's important. There's two kinds of grease that come with this kit. And I had to go look in the book. I've got it wrote down just because I've done a bunch of these. But this uh, yellowish stuff here is for the inner joint. That's for your tulip joint over here. This stuff is kind of a real dark, dark green, almost a block. It's for your uh, outer joint. And this is the one that comes in a white tube like this. So what we'll do, what I like to do is just kind of start, almost try to pack some of this down in here. Well, I got a one-legged woman. Nobody loves me like she do. Slide the boot down and get it close, but not all the way on. A lot of guys will wrap these little joints with electrical tape just so it doesn't cut the boot. These got so much oil and grease on them, I really don't worry about it. Just kind of wiggle them and shake them a little bit. See, that's what I was trying not to do. Okay, so once I get it down on there, what I'm going to do is go ahead and lay it on the bench here. And now that I got it close, I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of this grease and pack it into this boot as much of it as I can up in here. And it'll take it'll take the whole tube, so well, that one legged woman she left this for another man. Well, that one legged woman. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and take this boot, slide it up on there. I'm gonna put this back in the vise. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I got still got grease on everything, but Snap this down into that groove, and then this part, you'll fill it. It's got a little rise in the shaft, okay? And then it fits right, it'll drop right into that groove, and it'll just stop moving once it does that, so. Yep. All right, now, they make a tool to clamp these down, and I bought one. I bought a very, very cheap version of one, and it didn't work. What I found here is I just bought an old pair of, uh, I guess, nips you'd call them like this. And just kind of took a file, just knocked the edge off, you know, the cutter edge off. And these seem to work really good. I've done all of them like that and haven't had any issues. So, so 
what we'll do is get this one here and start tightening it up a little bit until we get it in and make sure it's in the groove okay just squeeze it good okay same thing on the top and I like to line them up for no other reason than it makes me very happy so do what you want with it <laughs> okay I've went ahead and pinched them so they'll stay right there so what I'll do now is I'm going to lay this on the bench use some get on there one more time and give them a good lean on really pinching things down tight and that's good to go that should be all we need that joint feels good so now what we'll do slide this guy back down on this side so we're good okay let's go ahead and slide that back there all right <clears throat> same thing we got our inner boot it's the rubber one here so what we're going to go do is uh, we're going to drop this clamp on because once we get the boot on we won't be able to put that clamp on and we'll take actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop this bigger over clamp on too so what i'm going to do is slide this guy down on there same thing you just kind of give it a little twist give it a little ridges okay this is a groove it fits in i'm going to go shove it down past that groove because i need some room up top to work and then we'll pull it up top when we're ready so what we need to do now is go ahead and uh, we'll finish cleaning up this inner joint here. Okay, okay. and a little bit of grease on everything or nothing. So what I did, I marked it up. I always mark them up. You can kind of barely, it's fading a little bit. We're just from wiping it. So I know that that side goes up when I put it back together. So what I'm going to do is line this up with the mark I made on top here. So now all that stuff is lined up, went back on the same way it came off. All right, now we've got our old C-clamp here, our old uh, C-ring, sorry, that we took off. And like I said, the new one, the kit's got a new one in it, so we're going to go ahead and put that, that one back on it. So again, we'll use our here handy-dandy tool. Get on there, drop that guy down on there. Make sure it's in the ring, you hear it snap. And you can see, if you take a look, you can look all around and see that it's in the ring. You just wanna make sure it's down in there. So we're good to go. And that guy. Okay, last step is we're gonna re-grease. And again, we're putting the yellow grease on the inside joint. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and move this up into its groove, okay? And I'm just gonna start filling it up in there. So just kind of fill that, I'm gonna shake it around a little bit. And I got a little bit of grease here, I'll probably go ahead and put it in the tulip joint there when we put it back together, so. So I'm going to pull this back over, see that, and I'm going to go finish wiping as much of this old stuff out as I can. Alright, so what I'm going to do here, I've got the inner joint, I'm just going to go ahead and try to get the rest of this stuff down in here. Just sit right here, work this stuff down. Alright, used all the grease up. take our mark it should be marked right there still we know we've got everything lined up down this way so we'll line that guy up you kind of have to sometimes you have to play with these little these rollers here just to kind of get them snap them in yep there we go and slide it right down try to get the boot up on it first before you sit the joint down in there there we go There we go. Okay, boots on it, everything's seated in. So what I'm gonna do is take it out of here. Sit back on the workbench. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do, well, I'm sorry, second to last thing we need to do is put these clamps on. So we'll get that back up in the groove it goes in. Just like that. 
And these are pretty easy. All you do with these guys is slide them over. You've got kind of a little leverage point here. Go ahead and get your screwdriver ready. Okay, we're going to push this over. Start working these little tabs down. There we go. And then what we'll do last, just take my clients here and just kind of seat them good. Okay, same thing on the bottom. Get that clamp up on there. The bottom, uh, the bottom of the boot is in the groove on the shaft. It needs to ride in. So we'll get that right where we need it. Start pulling this guy over. Okay, take a screwdriver. I'm going to hold down my thumb, take a screwdriver, bend over the tabs. And then I'll just take uh, this. Seat those down, make sure they're good tight. Okay, that's it as far as uh, rebooting it. The last, the last thing we got to do is there this little clicker on the end of the shaft. Let me put it up here so you can see it. Okay. This little clamp here on the end of the shaft, I'm sorry, this little clip on the end of the shaft, it's what actually holds the CV shaft into the differential. It fits in a little groove there in the outer splines. Um, it comes with a new one, so we'll go ahead and swap it out. These are super easy. Let's take a screwdriver and pop her off. Now, yeah, we'll put that in the discard pile. We'll take our new one here and just push her on. And that's it. As far as rebuild goes, that's all you need to do to uh, redo one of these shafts. Like I said, the uh, I do Tacoma shafts the same way. The only difference on those is the uh, clamps on the boots are a little bit different, and they comes with two bottles of grease for each half of the shaft instead of one bottle for each half. So um, that should be it. What we'll do now is we'll go ahead. It's ready to go. We'll clean up the old grease off the A arm and stuff, and we'll slide this back into the truck. One more thing I want to show you, uh, sometimes, and I've done this a couple times when I've taken the pry bar and knocking these out of the differential, there's a little dust shield that fits on the end of this guy, and I, I've knocked them off a few times. If you do that, don't sweat it. It's super easy. All you do is you put it back on. you got the little lip here, so you're pushing that down. Okay, and then just take a hammer and just kind of tap it on. It's just a, it's a really, really, really light press fit. So and you can even take a little screwdriver here and work around the edge if you want. Let me tighten up this guy a little bit. So if you knock one of these off when you're rebuilding it or whatever, don't worry about it. It just, just goes right back on. Yeah, that's it. Ready to go back in the diff. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right. What we're going to do here, this is the differential side of the CV shaft. You can see up here, this is that little clipper replaced. Okay, back there is this side of the differential if you can see it. There is a seal um, on the outside and what you've got to be careful when you land this thing, you don't want to tear that seal up, so try not to drag the splines on or anything, especially all this little sharp stuff. So what I like to do before I land these things is to try to, uh, just to help not cut that, that um, seal in there and also help this thing slide in a little easier. First thing I like to do is I'll get some bearing grease here. And this C-clip, you can kind of see, if you can see it there, it kind of just flops around a little bit. I'll take a little bit of heavy grease like this and put it on the splines. And what we're doing here is keeping this thing, we'll keep it from turning, and I want, because I want the open end down here, I want it facing down, I want gravity to be able to hold that down. So that way it's not, you know, up while I'm trying to put it in the, in the groove in there, in the, in the differential. So, so I'll do that, and the other thing I'll do is I'll take some of this grease, and I'll just go ahead and spread it around on this uh, seal right here. Just to kind of, kind of, you know, initiate the seal there between the two. So once we do that, I'll take the shaft. We got our notch facing down. Which doesn't work. There we go. I think the issue I had before was getting the other end. I don't remember. Anyway, with the sway bar, it takes a little finagling. So once we're in there, again, let me make sure my C clamp is down. Okay, and then we'll just get it as straight as we can. Slide it up in that diff. Okay, 
All right. All right, we're gonna try Landis. So we got that, we got it straight in there. Sometimes you can give it a little tap. This one's not gonna go in that easy. So what I like to do, and sometimes it takes two hands, Aaron, if you wanna help me. Aaron thinks he's got it in a good hole here, so we're gonna tap her in. Yep, there we go. Yeah, sometimes it's just, you gotta catch that clip in just the right spot. You gotta make sure the splines are lined up at the beginning too, though. Yeah. If those aren't lined up, you're just gonna be hitting spline on spline, and it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yep, we're good there. So what we can do, and what you'll, that dust shield, you, that, remember the one we put on before? It'll actually, if you look underneath, it'll almost sit inside of the differential a little bit. And that's how you know those have, uh, those were driven all the way in. So, cool. We're good. Now we can go ahead and put the rest together. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to, and since Aaron's standing there, I'm going to have him. I can do this myself, but. Wait, let me stop. Just go ahead and line all this up. That nah, worked out pretty easy. Okay. All right. That just slides right into them splines. Okay. We'll go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and put our hardware on here. Go ahead and start this stuff. Okay. So here's our hub nut. I'll use this just to kind of pull it up in there until it stops like that and then I'll back away. And that, that way I've, I've pulled the shaft up in there, it's seated, but I actually, I don't want to do this with impact, I want to actually torque it and put the proper torque spec on it. So let me go ahead, I'm going to put the lower ball joint bolts on just so this thing's not flopping around and then we'll, uh, we'll torque it down. We've got new bolts here. Here's the new bolts that uh, we ordered, there's the part number on them. You can see 9008010066. Pick you up. These are cheap insurance. If you're buying this stuff from Toyota, like you should be anyway, um, in my opinion, uh, dude, spend the extra 10 bucks on bolts. So we're going to put blue Loctite on all this stuff in case we ever have to take it back apart. That is a lot of Loctite, so we'll kind of share amongst bolts. You've seen there inside. Oh, I didn't play. Okay, let's see if I too much off. Alright, so we're going to start putting these guys on. I don't know where that uh, sport thing is. There's one on that impact right there. That, that we had a different one too though. I'm just gonna run through them all one more time, make sure I got them all. Just peace of mind. Okay, those two are good. Okay, that's all four of those guys. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on and get this hub nut torqued down. Hub nut's ready to go. I've got my 35 millimeter socket here. We're gonna torque this guy down. So, a little trick for you, take a screwdriver here, stick it in the pins on your brake rotor and just kind of let it right against that caliber right there. This makes it, for me, makes it a little easier. Okay, make sure that's up on there. There 
we go. That's it. So that should be set. Okay, last thing is got our little retainer here, and there's several notches here. So what you're going to do is just uh, one of these will line up with that hole. So just keep turning it until you finally line up. Take your cotter pin, put your cotter pin back in. Um, let's find my needle nose here. Tap that guy back in. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we'll flip this around, pull the long side up across the front here. And we'll shove the other side down. And that should be it. Last step, just take the cap here, put it right there. And I usually like to use a uh, rubber mallet for this, but we'll just use the tail end of this. Just work it around. And that's it. Your CV shaft is reinstalled. The only thing you got left at this point, just put the wheel back on like you know, like normal, and uh, you're good to go. That's it. You recording? Now we are. I can't do anything with Aaron beating on the truck over there. Oh, yeah. Aaron, Aaron's always trying to camera hog. <laughs> this is Michael's video, not Aaron's video. Is this all about me, Aaron? <laughs> It's all about me. Listen, Ricky Bobby said it best. You can't have two number one, seven eleven. 11. Okay. Now, you can do this by yourself. I've done it several ways. What you gotta do is kinda... How many lug nuts he got over there? Must have a dually or something. I know, dude. It's just like a 16 lug truck on that side. It wasn't straight down. I was doing it little by little. I wanted to work it nice, so I didn't put a It always makes sense to rip the bag open from the bottom, too, even though it's open at the top. It, just keep that in mind. When you're it looks good on video. Uh, you know what? We all have our own technique, all right? There we go. Now, Are you done? Are we good? Now you can't reuse this bag. That's to make sure that you don't reuse this bag. You don't want that. We happening. will recycle. You will. Um, you might totally your truck if you reuse this bag. So. Wow. It boys the warranty. Wow. <laughs> wow. Sometimes it's easier to do this stuff by yourself instead of your friend.